the question you have to ask yourself when you're retiring, think contemplating retiring early. If money, if I could do whatever it is I want to do with my time and not necessarily think about going to work every day, what would I do? Uh, we're going to tackle that question in, in just a second. But before we get into that, I just want to welcome you to the channel. Uh, Ask Sabado, uh, thank you for coming. You could have been anywhere else in the world right now, and you're here with me, and I appreciate that. Um, and if you've been here before, welcome back to the channel. But before we get started, I just ask, please hit that like, hit that subscribe button so we can continue moving down the path. I get the message out to people and people that have questions about early retirement. Just ask, uh, just make sure that they have access. We can make sure they have access to the channel. Um, you know, there's, I'll never ask for anything except for you to ask questions or, or provide comments if there's something that you like or dislike or you want to give me some feedback or, you know, or, or give me some help on the channel. Uh, but I, I, I think there's a, we have a, a big opportunity to do something special with just real people helping real people get to where we are. Nothing is, it, it's always organic here and, and that's where it is. So uh, on that note, let's get into it. Um, when you when you retire, just like if you retire at any time, one of the most important things to figure out is you don't want to ever retire by running away from a job. Because what happens when you run away from a job, you're running away from something that is that's not sparking joy. But sometimes it's easy to get into what I call the death spiral of focusing on those things that don't give you joy. So you don't actually know what it is that you want to do. Um, a lot of times. People have dreams of, well, if I won the lottery, I would do this, or if I won the lottery, I would do that. And the reality is most of the time, people that win the lottery, they go broke. Why? Because they don't have a plan. So you don't necessarily have to script out every day. Um, I just finished my sixth month of retirement, and I've done a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I knew I wanted to take a trip. I wanted to enhance, get better at some of my current hobbies, and I want to find some new hobbies. And so the trip we took, we went to the Panama Canal. We took a nice cruise. Uh, it was a 10-day cruise, made some great friends, saw some great places, saw the Panama Canal, which was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, bucket list trip. I recommend it to anybody. And if you have questions about the cruise line I use or anything like that, you can leave that down in the comments. I can, I can tell you about that. Um, one of the things I always wanted to do my whole life was teach. And I was on track to be a teacher when I graduated from college and realized that you just can't make it. There's just not a lot of money in teaching. And I, I needed to make some money because I really had to figure out a way to take care of myself and then eventually have a have a family. And, and teaching would have taken too long to get there. And, and it wasn't enough. And I could have a broader impact working in industry, doing recruitment types of work and, and so on and so forth. And so I, I ended up doing that. Um, but when I stopped working, uh, when I retired, I went, I got my teaching credential. I got my credential so I can go and substitute teach. I went and did one class and realized that I don't know that teaching is for me right now. At some point, I think I may go back into it, but not today, probably not tomorrow and probably not for a period of time. And that goes to say that sometimes you're going to think you want to do things and you're going to have dreams of doing things. You're going to do them and realize that's not what you want. The fact of the matter is that's okay. It's like I tell people, what are you going to do with when you retire? What I want to do or nothing at all. Um, another another hobby that I picked up was playing the piano. You could probably see behind me, I have my 88 key uh, piano. I've started to teach myself the piano. I got an app that I paid for one time for the entire year. I could play some, a few songs now and perhaps I'll play a song for you in, a, in a, another episode. But I, I could play a little bit of the piano now, and and I love that, and it's it's really fun. I don't I'm not I'll never be Beethoven, uh, but I I play piano, and I've got friends now that are musicians that I spend time with, talk music theory with, talk music understanding with, and hopefully get together and start playing the piano together. Um, you know, some of the hobbies that I that I already had are playing golf. Uh, like ninety percent of golfers out there, I'm a horrible golfer. And I like the play. I enjoy it. I'm hooked. Uh, but I wanted, I've always wanted to spend a little bit more time. But because I was working all that time, I couldn't do it. I can only play one day a week. And when you're playing one day a week, you're compressing a lot in that one day a week. And it's expensive. 
And so now I play um, during the week and I could play twice during the week and it's still less expensive than that one day of the week. You know, you meet a different, you meet different individuals, you meet other retired people. It's a great way to meet other retired people when you have different types of conversations because when you have the bandwidth to think you and, and not just think about work and be stressed out about work, you develop richer bonds, you have better conversations and you spend better time getting to know people. And so I would, you know, so, so I, I try to play golf and I, I want to get better. I want to, I, I shoot in the nineties now. I'd like to get down to shooting somewhere in the eighties so I could really have some respectable scores. Although I'm, I'm told nineties are respectable scores, but for those of you out there that are scratch golfers, let me know what your thoughts are about that in, in the comments below. But there's, um, you know, another, another hobby of mine is, um, Another hobby of mine is is gardening. Uh, I picked up gardening about ten years ago. I just love growing things, and you know I like to go to the. We have a nice garden in the backyard, and, and every season we're we're growing stuff. We're right now I've got cabbages and onions and carrots and collard greens and lettuce and just a whole bunch of stuff, but. And we can have a whole conversation on gardening and, and we can have a conversation. Let's, let's have a conversation about that. Let's talk about what are you growing in your garden? And do you have any gardening tips? I'm certainly not a guru, but I harvest every season. I just, I have garlic out now that's, that's drying out and I'm waiting for my onions to finish and, and things like that. Plus we have a whole host of flowers and, and that type of thing. Um, and one of the other things I'm thinking about doing is becoming a, Master Gardener, one of the universities out here has a Master Gardener program. I have the time. It's interesting to me. I don't necessarily want to go and work on a farm, but if you're like me, you like to know the science behind things. How do things actually work? So that way you can duplicate it, even if your conditions are a little bit different, because you know how to substitute and things like that. Um, so there's there's a lot. And, and, and the other thing that when I retired that Becomes, and I, I wouldn't necessarily classify this as a hobby, but you really have an opportunity to really strengthen the relationships with the people that are close to you. When you're in the hustle and bustle and you're going every day, uh, you could spend time, you could get to know people, you can have friendships. But I always found that it was difficult for me to have some of the conversations that I wanted to have because I always had other stuff in my mind. It's almost like a computer that runs slow. It's just there's so much other stuff in there that until you clean off that hard drive, um, until you clean off that hard drive, uh, it's, you don't, you don't have the, you, you don't have the, it, you're, it's not going to run as robust as it, as it would or as quickly as it would. And it's the same thing with the mind when you have stuff from work. And again, we, I'm, I'm sure you love your job. You love what you do. You're doing something that's meaningful and brings purpose to you. But if you don't have the space in your mind because you're working 60 hours a week and maybe you only have two hours with this one individual, then you, you have to ask yourself, are you getting are the, everything out of the relationship that you can? Or if you had the bandwidth, uh, would, there, would there be more that, that you would be able to, to do or would that relationship be richer? And so I'm finding that my relationships are different. I have a friend that I go walking with. He's about 30 years older than I am. And we have some of the greatest conversations. I don't know if I laugh as hard with him as I do with almost any of my other friends. And it's, uh, it's, it's incredible. And I learn from him. He learns from me. We talk about a whole host of things. And I realize that a lot of the stuff that I'm working on now isn't new. Um, and he's been retired for some time. So again, I, these are things that if you love what you're doing, then they become hobbies for you. And if they're hobbies for you, then if you take time to do them, you take time to do them right. And as you continue to take time to do them right, you feel really good about what you're doing. And you'd be surprised at how much time those things will fill up. Um, and if you take your hobbies along with your important relationships, you really have a lifetime worth of, of things to do. It's just a matter of getting to the place and understanding that. So, you know, if you have any thoughts or questions, um, you know, please put those down in the comments. I ask that you go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel. If you find this interesting in any way, subscribe. Uh, I'm going to continuously put up content 
I think it's just, again, it's, it's really just real conversations and real perspective from a real person. Um, none of this is going to be uh, incredibly uh, professional grade. It's not, you know, I'm not a CNN show or I'm not a, a Fox News show. I'm not going to get into those types of things. Uh, I'm not going to have, but it's, it's going to be great conversation. At some point, I'd like to continue to build the capability where we're going to have people calling so you're not just writing comments in the, in, the, in the comment section, but you're also able to call in. I think that would be great so we can have some more interaction. But until then, thank you for taking time to be on my channel and we will connect soon.